Hey guys, Andrew Jackson, this one here. And what you'll really get out of this tutorial is how to shape lighting using filters and stuff like that. Quite desaturated, there's, there's quite a bit of blue, decent fade to the shadows, the smallest Mac look to the highlights. I like that the smoothness to that image. Not super smooth though. It looks like he's warming things up towards his more recent stuff. Everyone inside of the course has the raw image to follow along in this tutorial. So go step by step. I find it really, really, really helps the learning process. Andrew is also a guest editor in the course. He himself takes you through a few of his edits. You get the raw image and step by step tutorial there from him himself. So you learn exactly how it's his style about, along with countless other awesome photographers as well and that list is continually growing and yeah without any further ado let's get into this tutorial all right so trying to achieve this one so over here uh if we just check out the cropping so this is before so he's just tried to frame improve the framing and really get in on the subject so that's the cropping and then all what we need to do is do some basic basic adjustments in here but there'll be quite a bit of filters and stuff later on at the end so i'm gonna come in with filters so don't pay too much attention to these like what we want to do just need basic adjustments really improve the contrast brighten it up a bit so we'll turn on the curves all right so a little cap off to these whites you can see over here these aren't true true white they are pretty bright but they're not just got a bit of a fade to them so we've got that going on by dropping the white point just a bit and then we've got a pretty strong and gradual fade to the shadows and blacks so that's what we've got dropping the shadows a little bit upping the blacks gives that fade and then no adjustments in the color channels the colors look pretty normal real soft contrast so i don't think you'll be doing much in the curves uh, there's a little bit of warmth in the shadows that will do a split toning um yeah dehaze will help give that like dreamy soft look that he definitely has for this image highlights uh right right okay so we've got like this flatness to the image but we want to shape the lighting like the lighting isn't very dynamic it's not ah we need we need to improve the like contrast and stuff of the image so what we've got here is a bunch of filters so up the top here go grab this one so this one we're going to the exposure so what we're doing is just we're going to try to enhance the light that is already there so the light is coming from this direction um yeah so highlights maybe to keep it a keep a bit of detail there or flatness i might drop the highlights um i think we're good but We've got another one here and we'll come down to we'll grab this one so we'll come over to this one now this one is a luminosity lumen lumen so this one's a luminosity 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 uh luminance range so what we've done is selected like taken out some of the dark areas so we just want to be affecting the highlights more and that's what we've done you just like slide this so this is only the highlights this is a bit more the highlights but we want to really target the brightest areas and this this is this little box here is where the majority of the effect will be and then these two points is like the end points within your uh, range filter here okay with this one we are going to be if i press o that's where it's affecting and yeah it's more of an effect to the highlights leaving the shadows a little bit more alone and we'll get this nice glow coming over top of the subject so what we're going to do go exposure um could maybe warm it up a bit uh maybe leave down up the shadows to help that brightness from the light coming over top of the subject or hitting the subject bit of contrast maybe Blacks. I don't know. 
bring blacks down to keep a bit of that contrast. Dehaze. And then we've still got to soften things up with some other filters still. Now we'll go more exposure, we need more. Okay, I think that looks a bit better. Okay, so clicking on another one here. So this is just another one, pretty much in the same. Sometimes it helps to keep them separate. I maybe could have just done it all in one, but bring up the exposure. Same idea of just increasing the light hitting our subject from the left, because that's where the light is coming. And then just highlights to like keep the detail. Now that we've like enhanced the light from where it's coming from, we also want to darken where it's not coming from. Let's grab a filter here. So it's darkening this bottom right corner here. And just what we'll do, press O to get rid of our red mark. I'm just gonna dark it, darken it here. Again, just to frame the subject a bit better. Okay, we've got another one here and we'll just, yeah, darken again. Um, this one, darken a bit more. But I might keep it natural by keeping these bright areas kind of bright. So we'll just maybe lift the whites and that way the, the bright areas don't get affected as much. It looks a bit more natural. Highlights, yeah. But overall we're, we're darkening the corner. And then we've got one more over here. So this one, we're just going to do the same. And we're just going to frame the subject a bit better. Bring down the exposure a bit. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to come down too much. Maybe there. Now we've got light really hitting our subject. And it's just framed a bit better. So we can close all those filters. And we can just fine tune some colors. So I'd say it's just a bit of a warmth to the shadows. Like we look quite blue in here. There's just a bit of a warmth in there. So we're going to come to split turning. Go shadows. Um, we're going to pick. Um, just keep it at zero. It's a nice red. And we're just going to add a little bit in, of this in. And then knock down a few of these really quick. No greens in here, but we'll bring them down roughly. Blues are pretty minimal. I just like to bring everything down roughly with everything else if it's not in the image. So as you can see, we're, pr we're pretty close. Just matching it up. Um, yeah, we want to add like richness. So I'm thinking well, there's not many yellows in this at all. Um, maybe down a bit of anything. I have done another image of his a different tutorial where he did bring down the luminance, the yellow, so we might do that again. Oranges, just to make our subject pop a bit. Uh, we've got a few blues, so let's make things stand out. Create a glow, kinda. Not many aquas, but keep it roughly in line with blues. Purple, oh, we do have purples. Down a little bit, same with the magenta. Just leave that there. Up here, I think our tones are pretty good. Oranges is the main one to get right. Yellows, a different edit I've done of his. He did slide the yellows to the right. So I might just leave it about there. Um, blues, so I'm just gonna look at the top of this horse here. Uh, we look quite purple. We want it more of a, a teal, it's only subtle, but go this way. If we just roughly do sharpening, it's a bit of sharpening, yeah. Do that. A little bit of grain. I, I always add in grain, like tiny bit. Um, we'll go with 10. There's a bug where you can't see grain at the moment. Remove chromatic aberration. Profile corrections. We will go for, yes, it brightens the side there a bit more. Gets rid of a little bit of vignetting, but since we're so cropped in, there's not much of an effect there. We should have done that. St ideally, you do that at the start. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. If we go reset, you can see the image looks quite flat and there's, it's hard to know what to do with it. So we cropped in and then we've just framed the subject even more by darkening this left corner, darkening this right corner, brightening the top. And then we had that luminosity mask that gave that soft sort of wrapping, wrapping light over the subject. Yeah, if I just show you that once more, that was something I don't cover very often. Delete it. Kind of looks flat and then we just like add this nice light over top yeah masks played a big role in this one so what if we went delete all masks and you can see how much more shape we gave to lighting before 
after we'll go reset go bang like that he's a guest editor if you want to learn from him himself and countless other guest editors sign up to the course and then you also get the raw images for these youtube tutorials personally i think they are just really really helpful to learn and that's how i've learned really quick is because i get the raw images i practice with all these raw images people send me and it has allowed me to get to where i am with editing now where i can look at an image and just sort of tell what it needs just practice so much with great images so but yeah go give them a follow guys and i will catch you in the next one if i didn't have your videos i think those guest editors would not be of much help because mm. you're doing stuff i would not understand you know your guidance so yeah. i think it's the combination that that really makes it valuable that's awesome exactly what i go for there i really like how you structured it even when you're watching a guest editor it's hard to you can see it and that that in itself is huge but then trying to understand, you know, what's in their mind, why have they done that? I think that can help you understand that. That can help you create your own style, that can help you be more deliberate and, you know, choose all these little building blocks to make your own, uh, you know, when, when you define that. So I find that. And, and, and your kind of search for like the why you're doing that, not just this is how, is, is, is super, super useful and powerful.